taking their 2022 World Car of the Year, and actually still my favourite electric car to date, and waving their magic N Performance wand over it to create a 650 racetrack capable corner rascal everyday sports car, their words, not mine, we have here the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Is this really the 8-bit electric Lancia Integrale? Well, that's what we're going to take a closer look at. I'm Johnny Smith, you're watching The Late Break Show, and this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tyre retailer. So we're in a studio in Frankfurt in Germany for a really quick look around this car. Now obviously the Ionic 5 has been hugely successful and it is still one of the cars that I keep looking at thinking it's like a real world concept car. But quick overview before we delve into the nitty gritty. You are looking at an all wheel drive, twin motor, 84 kilowatt hour battery packed car. So the biggest battery pack you can get in the Ionic 5 at the moment, the non-N, is 77. This is 84. Headline figures, 609 PS of power with 650 PS overboost, or NGB as they call it, N Grin boost. 740 Newton meters of torque, or 770 with that little boost button, NGB. 0 to 62 in 3.5 seconds, 160 mile an hour top speed, which is 258 kilometers. Remember, this battery has got that 800 volt technology, which means although we don't know the exact stats, it'll charge 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. Now, a bit more about this N brand. The N, where is it? There. It's a real badge, not a decal. Just remember that the N badge hasn't been seen yet on an electric car. This is the very first car to wear the N brand. What is the N brand? Well, it's kind of Hyundai's AMG M Sport RS. And Hyundai says that the Ionic 5 now has a raft of synthesized sounds and even a gear shift, eight speed gear shift to encourage driver engagement with electric cars. But we'll delve into that in a bit more detail after this. We've already talked about their pillars of N brand, which I said in the intro, corner rascal racetrack capability everyday supercar. So Hyundai have said that all of the design features of this car, all of the styling is functional. There's some differences on the front end immediately. This performance blue paint we've seen on all of the N models, it's now available as a matte finish as well as a gloss finish. All the badges are blacked out front and rear. You've got active air flaps down here which manage the thermal efficiency and the brake cooling. And again, I'll talk about that in a bit more detail because it gets a bit geeky. And this black N, gloss N mask here. And if you can see this orange stripe, this goes around the whole circumference of the car, all the way down the side skirts, all the way around the back. And it's got a little line in the middle here, which I think is inspired from like a racing steering wheel, from the middle point of a racing steering wheel. And these, these slats here, they're not on the normal N5, no, the normal Ionic 5. They remind me of the teeth of a whale sifting krill. Let's go around to the side. Now, before we talk about the side styling, I forgot to mention, these are 21 inch forged alloy wheels, okay? The car is a wider track than the previous, the normal regular five, and that's why these arches are body coloured as opposed to contrasting like they are on the normal car. The brakes behind it, four pot calipers, gigantic 400 mil brakes at the front end, and I think 345 at the rear, so they're bigger again. They're not made of carbon, ceramic or anything like that. They're, they're lighter weight, but they are still steel um, because this car does a lot of the regenerative braking. It focuses on that. Side styling though. I mean, I still love this car. You've still got these origami slats and all that kind of thing, but you've got the addition of real functioning vents coming in here. So the air blows over the wheel and the, the brake and then get, comes out through the rear, which we'll show in a minute. You've got the N down there for the body kit. Again, air comes through here. That looks really good actually. And that, that, that N has properly been molded in. It actually looks really interesting. It's bizarre that the Ionic 5 was quite a retro looking car, but this car doesn't look retro anymore. They've kind of de-retroed it. Make of that what you will. Oh, while we're on the profile of the car, if you go back, you'll see 
This car's actually longer than the standard Ionic 5. The front bumper is 55 mil longer and the rear bumper is 25 mil longer than the outgoing car. Interesting, right? Yeah. Right, we're gonna have a look at the back end of the other one down here, because I'm so damn greedy, I've got two at my disposal. Here's the other one. So let's look at this back end, because this is lit in a slightly better way. So the back end of the 5N, again, you can see the black, blacked in badging here. That iconic pixelated um, light work there, which I love, that's not different, but what is different, oh my gosh, look at this. Have you ever seen one of these before? Not on an Ionic 5 you haven't, because the normal model didn't come with one, which is a bit annoying, but this one does. Above that, you have this huge kind of spoiler, which carries right over from that hump of the roof, with what is a sort of end feature, the triangular kind of motorsport style brake light that's focused right in the middle with these indentations. I like it. Then down here, what a huge diffuser we've got going on here. Of course, it's a flat floor car because it's running on the dedicated electric car E-Gimp uh, chassis. If you haven't seen my original uh, review of this car, which was back in 2021, April, I think, it's one of my most successful videos on the channel. I'll put a link for that above my head. Carrying on those pixelations, I've seen just here, you've got the rear reflectors hidden behind what Hyundai tell me is like a checkered flag inspired design. And again, some extra cooling coming in from those wheel arches at the back here in gloss black. Neat, isn't it? Looks very WRC. But of course, Hyundai are good at WRC. And that's what the N brand is all about, motorsport performance. This is not just a straight line fast car, they say. It's about the whole driving dynamic. Hence why we're going to talk about drift mode in a minute. You'll have to forgive me for rattling through. There's so many stats that we've just been given from this technical seminar. We don't get that long to walk around the car and appreciate it. So I've talked to you around the styling differences, but what's a little bit odd for me is the car is still all steel. There's no composite panels or anything like that. This is still a steel car with obviously forged alloy rims. So it's going to be quite heavy. It's got a bigger battery pack. There's no word on curb weight at the moment, but obviously I've told you how powerful it promises to be. But rigidity, so it can go around corners and be a bit more agile. They've said 42 additional welding spots around the shell with 2.1 meters of additional structural adhesive used. That's to tie the shell all together. Plus front and rear subframes that have been enhanced by WRC inspired integrated drive axles. I don't exactly know what that means. It's hard to describe without showing it, but it basically means the axles are sort of inboard. There's less moving parts, they're stronger um, and a little bit more protected. This car does not use any suspension from the original Ionic 5, that much I have been told. In fact, tried to write down some of the details from one of the engineers. So it's the first all wheel drive N car. Most of the, all of the N cars to date are front wheel drive. So it's ground up new with Mando dampers and it's got this ESC three stage damping system with Eco, Sport and N mode with totally new heavier um, duty steering knuckles and different ge geometry forgot to tell you because this is a performance car a performance EV it has to kind of tackle grip as well as efficiency so we've got 275 35 21 tires that are dedicated made for this car when it comes to needing new tires for your car whether they're electric or whether your car is a piston car head to blackcircles.com head to the black circles website enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode and then you'll find the most suitable tires for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tyres from real customers to help you choose the best tyres for your car. And with the Black Circles Click and Fit service with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. To be honest with you, it is quite frustrating having just a first look walk around rather than a first drive, because having seen what this car is possibly capable of, it's fascinating. So the rear axle has an ELSD, that's not two types of recreational drug. It's actually an electric limited slip diff going on because this car allows slip and it has an end drift optimizer mode. It helps to maintain a drift angle if you want to get the back end out. Not only that, it has a torque kick drift function, which allows the driver to simulate clutch kick and putting a car out and initiating a skid like you can with a piston drift car. This car apparently has that. So it's obviously going to throw all of that power or most of it to the back end. 
can't wait to see if that actually works. I'm sure it will. The other thing this car has is this NE shift, which is a simulated eight speed paddle shift gearbox with sounds as well as a feel. It actually jolts you when you grab a gear and it's supposed to, although it sounds a bit odd and a bit false, it's supposed to be really, really good when you're trying to learn a track and get an idea of speed. Because the thing about electric cars, they can be very fast, but they're also very heavy. And if you get turns wrong, you go in a bit hot, you can come unstuck and that's supposed to help people learn and maybe bring this sort of video game generation into a real car driving appreciation, especially a car that's fully electric. So we've got basically simulated jolt between the gears, which is, feels all very Sega Rally to me. And then an active sound mode. There are eight Bose speakers inside the car. There's two on the outside and they combine to give you three different active sounds modes, which are optional, I must add. You can have it as quiet as you want, I'm sure. First mode is ignition, which actually records an N rally car, I think, and gives you pops, bangs, all of the piston sounds you'd get linked to the throttle. Then you have futuristic EV sound, which is probably a bit Porsche Taycan. And then you have something called supersonic jet sound, which sounds like a jet. Apparently no idea what that's going to sound like. Uh, could be a bit odd, but again, it's, it's a button. You can switch it on. You can turn it off. Right. Regen. Those big brakes I just told you about, 400 mil at the front, up from 345, 360 mil rear. But regen is key. They say that 80 to 90% of daily driving is done on regen. They say that 40 to 50% on track is going to be regen on the Ionic 5N, which is a huge amount. Up to 0.6 G of decelerative force via regen, which means obviously you're using less of your friction brakes. There's also thermal management going on with reconfigured radiator and all cool the setup at that front end there. And I'll show you a diagram of that because I think I've got a graphic which illustrates it better. Um, but you could also precondition the car. There's an N battery preconditioning mode, which means drivers can preset the battery temperature before they need the car for optimum performance. You can have drag mode where you have a short burst of all the energy, but the car's not running for long, versus track mode where a lower temperature is needed for longer stints on the track. Amazing, but also N energy usage mode. You have sprint mode, which prioritizes cooling on the track versus endurance mode, which maximizes range and probably tunes down the power ever so slightly. Oh, the boot. Still a practical car, this, you know, the Ionic 5. That's one of the reasons why I love it, stylish and practical. But the boot is slightly smaller. I believe it used to be 527 litres. It's now 480 litres. And on that note, we'll get inside and have a look. So we've still got things like vehicle to load. We've still got the practicality of it being a five seat car with a half decent boot. But in here, it's a very different beast to the original flavor Arnic 5. First things first, it's all dark, whereas the normal 5 is actually quite, it's off-white, beigey, quite light, airy feeling, and it doesn't have sports bucket seats, and it doesn't have a fixed center console like this. It doesn't also have a three-spoke sporty steering wheel. These are the main ingredients. Recycled Alcantara here with contrasting uh, blue stitching, an illuminating N on the back of the bucket seat here. The three spoke steering wheel compared to the two spoke, which I like, has the N buttons just here. Okay, it's got paddles on the back. It's got that NGB mode I was talking to you about. N grin boost mode to give that 10 seconds of over boost power to unlock all of that energy that the car has got. You've got recyclable door garnishes. There's the Bose audio system there. And I do love all these recycled materials that car companies are coming out with. Ever since the BMW i3, I think it's so much more creative than just your straightforward leather. Although you can order this car with leather if you so wish. There's various other parts inside here, which are made from bio pet yarn from sugarcane, plastic bottles, eco-processed leather. This Alcantara, as I said, is made from um, recycled existing Alcantara. But that non-floating center console, it's quite high there. It's probably got all the same technology like wireless uh, phone charging. Big wide aperture here with phone, um, with cup holders. Can you hear that though? 
it's actually idling like a WRC car. So this is obviously set to ignition mode. This same kind of double width screen and the, the physical buttons, which, which Hyundai and Kia are really good at actually, I think they, they really do get the contrast right between physical buttons versus touchscreen tech. I'm gonna press end mode now. Hang on, what we got here? So yeah, look, you can customize all sorts. You can customize your damping, your, your electric limited slip diff, You've got your head up display there, stability control, and there's your active sound. Right, so active sounds. Ignition sounds like a normal piston car. Evolution is the future sound, which I haven't heard yet, which is that. And then supersonic. I don't know if you can hear this on my mic, but it's all, it's all very futuristic and odd. And these are the things I was just telling you about, the battery preconditioning feature for drag or track use the end drift optimizer, which uh, I'm sure there's loads of different things to tell you that it could be dangerous. End race mode, torque distribution. You remember those reflectors at the back that look like a sort of checkered flag? Well, on the sill plate here, you'll see that is also a checkered flag with the end moniker on here and also on the pedals and the foot, the foot rest down here. So what Hyundai is basically saying is Electric cars can easily be fast in a straight line. They're trying to make this package and they're probably trying to do it at a different price point to someone like Porsche, because obviously Hyundai isn't Porsche. So it's about being able to go around corners. And when I was talking to the engineers when we were about to film, they were explaining how much Nürburgring time this car's had, 10,000 kilometers of, of track time to try and get this suspension and this setup to feel not just really fast, but grip well, loads of feedback. And with these weird kind of synthesized sounds and artificial gear shifts with a pause and a jolt. It's a fascinating prospect. And the Ionic 5 isn't the first car I would have expected to have become an N-series EV. Backseat area, like I said, it's still a five seat, pretty practical car. These buckets are fairly well indented. And of course it's a flat floor car because it's a dedicated EV chassis. Um, and all that weight is low down. But because it's low down and the batteries live in the belly of the car, the car is not that much lower than standard. So the suspension engineers had to bear that in mind. I've just noticed some more checker just there. And the other thing I've noticed is, I can't remember the last time a sort of rally inspired, really hair raising kind of uh, performance car has also got blinds for back seat passengers, very practical. This is the thing I'm interested in with the five. It doesn't lose all its practicality. It's still got quite a bit. Oh, I've broken it, have I? Shit. If you're watching this thinking what I liked about the Ionic 5 was the fact that you could have a pull-out kind of mini office instead of a glove box, and, it, and you could recline the driver and passenger seat to have a sort of bed where you could relax and could catch some Zeds while you were charging, and all that kind of lounge room serenity, this is not the car for you. This is a totally different beast, I think. I hope you've enjoyed my whistle-stop tour of the new Hyundai Ioniq 5N or Hyundai or Hyundai. Say it how you want to say it. I won't judge you. There's a lot to unpack. There's so much technology. There's so much effort that I think has clearly gone into this. This is double the power, pretty much, of the existing normal regular flavoured Ioniq 5. So it promises to be something special. And maybe it's trying to encourage a video game generation by those synthesised gear shifts and sounds. They might be cheesy and awful. They might be amazing. We don't know yet. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, I would love you to subscribe. What do you think about this 5N? Let me know in the comments. Cheers.